inequality throughout the South. Their commitment led to the desegregation of the F.W. Woolworth lunch counters on July 25, 1960. At Eastern Michigan University, on February 27, 1968, a group calling itself the Black Intellectuals met to discuss what action they could take to enhance the life of Negro students on campus. That night, the group changed its name to the Black Student Association and became a force for change on this campus. By the end of March 1969, the Faculty Council at EMU requested that the Instructional Policies Committee prepare a report on the demand of black students that a black studies program be initiated. And today, we have a vibrant, a vibrant black studies program on our campus. Likewise, it was pressure from students that brought about a women's studies program here at Eastern Michigan University. So much cultural change is the result of things happening on university campuses. When a young student by the name of Matthew Shepard was murdered because he was gay, change happened quickly. And students began to realize that lesbian, gay, bisexual, heterosexual, transgender, all needed to learn about each other and care about each other. Because of what we see happening on college campuses, I believe it is not long before we will have a woman as a president of the United States. In the state of Michigan, women now head many of our universities, Michigan State University, the University of Michigan, the University of Michigan Flint, Siena Heights University, Albion College, Elma College, Kelvin College, Delta College, Kalamazoo College, Madonna University, and Henry Ford Community College. The oldest college in the country, Harvard, now has a female president. And you know, again, that here at Eastern Michigan University, we finally have a woman who is the president of our institute. When I know how many women now serve as presidents of universities in Michigan and throughout the country, I see it as a relatively short time until a woman is president of the United States. Even in this way does the university and its students lead the way to major social change. I would love to live long enough to see that day so that I can celebrate with cheers and beers and tears the inauguration of a woman as president of this great country, just as I celebrated when I learned that Barack Hussein Obama, an African American, had been elected president of the United States. It is important for me to remind you that most political observers have noted that the major influence on President Obama's election were students of university age. At the same time that I revel in what has been accomplished by young people, I am aware that so many fine young minds are being underutilized in ways that cost us dearly. I'm not an accounting whiz, but if my perusal of the state of Michigan budget is correct, our budget allocates $2.1 billion for all of higher education in the state, and that same budget allocates $1.9 billion to run our prison system. We are spending almost as much on prisons in the state as we are spending on all of higher education. Universities have the potential to change lives in a positive way every single day. Prisons rarely enhance the life of a human being. No matter how corny my final observation, the most important thing I have learned over all these years is that we will never frighten someone into goodness. We will frighten them into obedience. Prisons exist to frighten people into obedience. Only love and caring and concern brings about change in people. It is the most important lesson I have learned in my life. No student has ever said to me, I try hard to be a good person and a good student, 
because I was lucky enough to grow up in a home where my parents scared the hell out of me. But I have had so many students tell me about parents and family and teachers and friends whose love has kept them going semester after semester after semester and year after year after year. There are so many more things I would like to say tonight, but I know you have other commitments for your time and green, bear, and green beer awaits some of you. But do be careful as I try to tell people bright, be, bright green beer turns pea green in your bladder. As anyone who knows me very well, they will tell you that I often end what I have to say by sharing my favorite poem of all time, a poem by Robert Frost. In my interpretation of this poem, I see Frost sitting where it's peaceful and quiet and away from all the stress and all the difficulty of life. And as he sits there, he thinks whether or not he would like to just avoid all that he has to deal with in the world. The poem, but then he makes an important decision. The poem goes like this. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though he will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near between the woods and frozen lake the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bell a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sound is the swoop of easy wind and down his throat. The woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but I have promises and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. I wish you well in the promises you have to keep and the miles you have to go before you sleep. Thank you.